The Mini 3 Pro is one of the best-selling prosumer drones ever, while the R2S has always been the favorite of many, including myself. At the moment there is a lot to talk about these two models, and plenty of questions like which one should I buy? Should I upgrade? In this video I will analyze the main differences and compare the two models, not so much to see which one is better, but more importantly to find out which model is best for a specific user. When I saw the specs of the upcoming Mini 3, I thought the new model might spell the end of the R2S. But DJI has always had an excellent marketing strategy and the two models have features that make them appealing to two different segments of users. I waited a couple of months to make this comparison to leave time to the Mini 3 to enter the phase of maturity after a few updates ironing out minor initial issues. The first obvious difference is the weight. The Mini 3 is under the threshold of 250 grams, and this makes a big difference in many countries, as it is under more relaxed regulations, especially for urban flying. Both models have obstacle detection sensors at the front, back and sides, but the R2S has an upward pair of sensors that protect from obstacles above. So a very slight advantage here from the R2S. Although I would not suggest using any of the two drones for close range tracking, as there are some blind spots, especially when flying laterally. The only model of the DJI line that can safely track a close distance is the Mavic 3. The two models feature the same flying modes, most notably the EXA and Focus Track, with the three modes Active Track, Spotlight and Point of Interest, plus Master Shots, Quick Shots, Hyperlapses, and panorama photography. They are implemented practically in the same way, so no major differences here. One major extra functionality of the new Mini 3 is the ability to shoot vertical video and photos, and this is a feature that could be extremely important with users who are active on social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok and YouTube Shorts. The Mini 3 can be purchased with the new RC controller with a built-in screen. I find it extremely useful. No more need to use a smartphone or tablet and cables. Just turn on the controller and the drone and in a few seconds we are ready to go. Recently the RC controller has been made compatible with the Mavic 3 and I would not be surprised if it will soon be possible to use it with R2S, but it is not the case yet. The new Mini 3 can be purchased on its own, without any controller, at 750 euros. And this is a nice move for users who already own another DJI model. The price with the traditional RC N1 controller is 840 euros, while with the new RC controller it costs just above 1000 euros. The Flymore kit with two extra battery, a charging hub and a shoulder bag can be purchased separately for less than 200 euros. The r 2 s sells just above 1000 euros with the traditional RCN1 controller or at 1300 euros with the Flymore combo. You will find links to these products with more info in the description below and don't forget to hit the like button to help spread this video. This is the noise level of each model, recorded with the same microphone at the same distance. As you can hear, the Mini 3 Pro is incredibly quiet, the lowest noise I ever heard in any drone. And this is very useful to avoid attracting unwanted attention. The R2S is built with premium material and feels very solid. It certainly gives the impression of being able to withstand a few knocks without problems. The Mini 3 is more plasticky and feels much more fragile, but this is obviously the price to pay for remaining under 250 grams in spite of all the technology squeezed in. The Mini 3 in flight responds very well to the controls and feels very agile, 
it gives an impression of more power compared to previous DJI Mini models. But the R2S feels immediately much more powerful. The maximum horizontal speed for the R2S is 19 meters per second versus 15 for the Mini 2. The vertical speed 6 versus 5. It might not seem a huge difference, but it does change things when shooting footage. With the Mini 3, in most cases, I have to speed up the footage in post processing when possible to get the feel that I want. While with R2S, I can obtain most moves in real time. There is even more difference in speed when we combine horizontal and vertical moves. The announced wind resistance is level 5 for both, but there is no doubt that I trust the R2S much more in medium to strong wind. Even though the Mini 3 behaves remarkably well in medium winds, it does move quite a bit and I would certainly not recommend it to someone living in Iceland. The battery life of the Mini 3 is around 30 minutes in average conditions, while the R2S a bit less, around 27-28. I shoot a lot of hyperlapses and in this case the extra time allowed by the Mini is a big plus. When shooting footage or photos I find that the higher speed of the R2S more than compensates for the lower battery life. For the Mini 3 a special battery is available with an announced time of well over 40 minutes. It makes the Mini 3 an ideal tool for hyperlapses but sadly is not available for sale here in old Europe. The signal transmission with R2S is excellent, I have never experienced any issues. Although I do not fight to crazy distances and tend to stay within line of sight, only occasionally in very rural areas I have reached 1 km, which is about 3300 feet I guess. With the Mini 3, many users have experienced serious issues, but it is a matter that varies according to geographic location and different batches of the drone. For most users, things have improved considerably after several firmware upgrades. In my case, the signal has improved a lot in rural areas, while in location with interferences, I often lose connection below 400 meters, something I had never experienced with any other drone. This is very annoying, particularly for a drone suitable for urban flying, but I trust DJI to fix the issue soon. The Mini 3 has a 0.77 inches sensor, much bigger than the one of previous Mini models, but a bit smaller than the 1 inch one of the R2S. The aperture of the Mini 3 is a huge f1.7, which should allow more light to enter the sensor, for better results in low light. While the R2S has a more traditional aperture of f2.8. The video resolution of the Mini 3 is 4K at a maximum frame rate of 60 frames per second, while the R2S can shoot video at a resolution of 5.4K at up to 30 frames per second. Many users dismiss the utility of the 5.4 resolution, but I find it extremely useful, not only to get more detail when encoding at 4K, but even more to zoom in, reframe and add movement without any loss of resolution. The field of view of the Mini 3 is equivalent to 24mm, while the R2S has a slightly wider one of 22mm. The Mini 3 has two color modes the ready to use normal and the flat profile this in alike. While the R2S besides normal has two true 10-bit profiles, D-Log and HLG. I'm not going too deep here into video and photo quality as I've already done two specific comparisons about them. Please refer to these videos, you will find a link at the end of this one and in the description below. Let's have a quick look at normal mode. The images are excellent with both models, we are in the realm of personal preference, so let me know your opinion in the comment below. I always like the footage coming out of the R2S and I do like the colors a bit more. Also I can see a touch of extra detail in the shadows, but we are very close. Moving to the fat profiles, I've always found that the 10 bits mode of the R2S are sensational. The colors are a thing of beauty plenty of detail in the shadows, 
They respond so well to post-processing that I can easily adapt it to any color scheme. This in a like in the Mini 3 was a first an 8-bit mode, therefore with a much more limited color space. After a firmware update it was turned into a sort of 10-bit, but not everyone was convinced. Several updates later, this in a like has gotten much better, it is a decent profile now, but in my opinion the two mode of the R2S are a big step above. Mini 3 has a real photo resolution of 12 megapixels against 20 megapixels for the R2S. The Mini 3 has also a mode labeled 48 megapixel, but this is not the true resolution. Basically, the sensor of the Mini 3 has the ability to split each pixel into four smaller ones. But I find it a bit misleading to call it 48 megapixels, as users might think that it is superior to the 20 of the R2S or the Mavic 3. It is not even remotely the case. The 48 megapixel mode of the Mini 3 does have some very slight benefits compared to regular photos, with a tiny bit of extra detail in easy light, but it falls apart in situations of high dynamic range with huge amounts of chromatic noise. The Mini 3 performs well with still images in easy light condition. It is a bit weak in high dynamic range situation with very little detail in the shadows. But thanks to the very wide aperture of the lens, it surprisingly outclassed the bigger brother in low light. Obviously the Mini 3 shoots video and photo in vertical mode and does it very well. But like with footage I found again the R2S superior with astonishing colors, excellent dynamic range and great detail in the shadows. As I said earlier, I was afraid that the Mini 3 could take the place of the R2S, but DJI has managed to keep a place on the market for both of them. The Mini 3 is a lightweight drone below the critical threshold of 250 grams. It offers a huge amount of functionalities for such a small size. It does a lot of things and does them well. It is a gigantic improvement over the Mini 2 and I certainly recommend it for beginners if the price is not too much of an issue. With the ability to shoot vertical video and a good ready to use mode, the Mini 3 is certainly the tool of choice for videographers who are active on social media platforms. It is also interesting for professionals who already own a Mavic 3 as a second drone to use in urban environments, for short trips or for hiking and for social media content. With R2S, DJI was free from weight constraint and therefore able to optimize sensor, lens and processor for the best quality in footage and photo. The difference in price is not huge and I strongly recommend it to users who want the best possible quality or users who live in very windy areas, 